Yo, hey guys, welcome back to this channel. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the strategy that I use in order for me to um, create a passive income via property. So, as you're aware, there's a lot of different strategies out there when it comes to buying and selling a property. However, the one that I love the most is actually using a vendor financing. So, what does a vendor financing entail? It's actually pretty much instead of the buyer going to the traditional lender, um, let's say a bank or financial institute, um, I become the lender. Uh, I become the financier until such time they can um, they can pay me out in full. So what what I did was. I purchase a property at a traditional way, uh, but I get my own financing um, traditional way. And then after that, I on sell it to someone who at the current stage cannot buy, uh, cannot qualify um, the banking finance, let's say. Um, until such time they can do that, they will be under me. So they're paying me on a weekly basis that look like a rent, um, that look like a, yeah, that look like a, a rent, but technically they're paying, um, let's say, uh, a, my, let's say a mortgage. So that's how I go about it. So, because, also, because, because there was a, a lot of equity position that I have, I can wait for my position to, uh, to be paid in full later on during the day, uh, later on in the future time. Um, but as long as today, one, my my mortgage is being paid to the bank and I'm still earning uh, an income from it. So I'll give you an example of it, yeah? So uh, we purchased a property at about 5% down. Um, price of the property is about 300,000 or so. Um, and my repayment to the bank it was at about three hundred dollars per week. I was holding that property for quite some time. I did a renovation on it, um, additional uh, what is it, ten thousand dollars or something, ten ten fifteen thousand dollar renovation or so. Um, and then on, I rented out traditional way. Um, after after holding it for a number of years, um, the rent doesn't really increase much. The rent was stable at about 300 or 350 dollars per week. Now from there, I realized that the rent would not going out. In fact, it's actually the other way around. My the rent was actually going down. Instead of 350 dollars per week, I was receiving about 320 or 310 dollars a week. All I know is actually going down, um, and my mortgage repayment is still at the um, the the. Well, it hasn't actually gone down yet because I haven't actually polished a lot of um, the mortgage on it because I only had about three years on it. Um, so my my repayment to the bank roughly about three hundred dollars per week. Rental income is at three hundred and ten, uh, three hundred twenty. Call it low threes, yeah, three hundred dollars per week. But there's also other expenses on the property, such as water, shrider, council, property management, um, and yeah, all, all insurance as well. So all of those expenses on the property add additional $100 on top of my repayment. So, so I put down 5% deposit, so that's a big lump sum. Um, the rental income at 300. The expenses at 400 so I was out of pocket about a hundred dollars a week so I don't like that I don't like the idea of um, what makes it uh, what I don't like about it because every week I have to fork out a hundred dollars per week just to just to hold this property yeah so to me it doesn't make sense well why would I want to go invest on a pro invest on a property that is actually going to cost me money of a hundred dollars a week so luckily the market is actually has turned um, upways. So um, I was able to sell the property at about four, uh, at about five hundred thousand, just under five hundred thousand. So bought it at three and sell it again at five. It was it was it, 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 yeah. if it was 
sell a traditional way at five hundred thousand dollars i pay off my mortgage at 300 i'll be pocketing roughly about two hundred thousand dollars or so in my bank account minus my five percent minus my taxes on all that jazz minus all of the administration costs it's probably roughly about a hundred thousand that would be pocketing now that might be a lot for some but i look at a better way than that now instead of me actually holding it and instead of me actually selling a traditional way i use seller financing i was selling into the person at five hundred thousand dollars however i finance the property instead of them going to the bank again my repayment was three hundred dollars per week but because i structure it a certain way the repayment their repayment to me becomes seven hundred dollars a week so that would mean and all the expenses on the property it is taken care of by the owner now not me so that would mean that now I am going to be a passive income roughly about uh, $400 on that one property per week so by by changing the structure by ch by thinking slightly a bit different I was able to create a passive income of $400 based on one property so which I rather have the passive income purely <coughs> because if you calculate um, let's say $400 per week for the next 30 years um, it would worth a lot more than $200,000 in cash now that's the reason why I rather have um, a seller finance or vendor finance so that is the strategy that I use so once I did that, I uh, actually do another um, seller finance on another property and another one and another one. The exact same method, There's a, the, same, the same strategy that I use over and over again. So from there, that's how I created my passive income. So if you guys want to know more about um, seller finance or vendor financing, especially here in Sydney, Australia, um, I've done quite a few of those by all means write in the questions on the description below and if you are thinking of doing that by all means again let me know um, I was that's on one property and then from then on all, all the administration costs like all the holding costs on the property belongs to the seller uh, belong to the buyer um, all of the um, the headache if they're going to rent it out belongs to them all you care about is that your your problem your repayment let's say all you care about is actually receiving the income from that and make sure that <coughs> my, my my original mortgage is actually being paid for so there shouldn't be any reason why you cannot actually do that <coughs> you cannot pay off your more um, it, it minimize for me, having vendor financing is it minimizes all the headache. I'll eliminate a lot of the headache. <coughs> so one, like a property manager, I don't deal with property managers anymore. So I deal with the owner direct. So when I buy the property, yeah, all right, I still buy a traditional way. <coughs> um, but when I deal with the owner, I'll deal with them direct. Is it really hard to do vendor financing? Um, depending on the person. As a seller, if you don't want to, <coughs> if you're in a situation where it was like um, one with like me, one I don't want to sell the property at a loss. Then you gotta think a little bit more creative. Um, two, if if you be a little bit open on how to do things then it will be profitable for you. This concept apparently has been um, in Australia for a long time, for like a hundred plus years or so, but it's not being taught um, anyway. It's not being taught um, the traditional way, let's say, when you're buying or selling a house. Um, traditionally also, when you buy or sell a house, it goes for about, right, 
traditionally when uh, you're selling a house, um, most people anyway, they go for about 42 days um, delay settlement. Um, I do a very extension in um, delay settlement in order for me to achieve the cash flow from it. So you got to be a bit more creative when, when if you want to earn a passive income, especially through a property. You can't just do the, I don't know, like to me, buy and hold, it's, it's, it's not useful um, unless you put a big lump sum of money in there. Like massive, massive lump sum money. Um, for me, on the other hand, um, I, I, I can't see myself doing the buy and hold property type of investment. I'd rather do the seller finance in order for me to get passive income. Um, everyone's doing it differently, but um, that's just my method and it's been working quite well. I was able to create about a thousand bucks a week on passive income doing this um, with only a small uh, handful of properties as well. Less than 10 properties you can do that. But at the same time, depending on your equity position, uh, how many, how much cash have you got in there. So that space on one property alone, I was able to rack up roughly about three hundred dollars. Uh, sorry, four hundred dollars passive income. Multiply that with a different amount of properties, and you got your formula to success. So that's how I do it. Hopefully, this information will be uh, useful for you guys. Property investing via vendor finance, seller finance. That's my preferred choice of um, method to create passive income. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheese.